Hi, library friends. This is Miss Cindy from the Crown Point Community Library, and today I'm bringing a special STEM story and activity into your homes. So we are getting ready for Thanksgiving, and one of the big traditions on Thanksgiving Day is Macy's, um, the department store in New York City, holds a big parade that they've been holding since the early 1900s, I think 1924. And um, the book that I wanna share with you is a book called Balloons Over Broadway, which is the story of how that parade began and the creator of the puppets in, or the balloons or the floats that are in that parade. So I'm gonna share that story with you and then I'll share our activity. Balloons Over Broadway by Melissa Sweet, the true story of the puppeteer of the Macy's Parade. This is Tony Sarge. Every little movement has a meaning of its own. From the time he was a little boy, Tony Sarge loved to figure out how to make things move. He once said he became a marionette man when he was only six years old. His father had asked him to feed their chickens at 6.30 in the morning every day. And Tony had an idea. What if he could feed the chickens without leaving his bed? He rigged up some pulleys and ran rope from the chicken coop door to his bedroom window. That night, he spread chicken feed outside the chicken coop door. The next morning, Tony pulled on the rope and the door to the chicken coop opened. The chickens ate their breakfast. Tony stayed snug in his bed and his dad, so impressed, never made Tony do another chore. When Tony grew up, he moved to London where he discovered that no one was making marionettes for kids anymore. So out of wood, cloth and string, Tony began to make puppets. He figured out ways to make his marionettes move so lifelike that they performed as if they were real actors Word soon spread about Tony's amazing marionettes. When Tony moved to New York City, the Tony Sarge marionettes began performing on Broadway. In the heart of New York City, in Herald Square, was the biggest store on earth, R.H. Macy's Department Store. Macy's had heard about Tony's puppets and asked him to design a puppet parade for the store's holiday windows. So Tony made new puppets based on storybook characters and then attached them to gears and pulleys to make them move. Macy's Wonder Town. In Macy's Wonder Town windows, Tony's mechanical marionettes danced across the stage as if by magic. All day long, they performed to shoppers jostling for a better look. But Macy's had an even bigger job in store for Tony. Many of the people working at, the Macy, at Macy's were, in, were immigrants, and as the holidays approached, they missed, out on their, they missed their own holiday traditions of music and dancing in the streets. Macy's agreed to put on a parade for their employees, and they hired Tony to help. Tony was an immigrant, so he loved the idea of creating a parade based on the street carnivals from all over the world. He made costumes and built horse-drawn floats, and Macy's even arranged to bring in bears, elephants, and camels from the Central Park Zoo. The animals joined hundreds of Macy's employees on Thanksgiving Day in 1924, winding their way from Harlem to Herald Square. It was a dazzling parade. In fact, Macy's first parade was such a success that they decided to have it every year on Thanksgiving Day to celebrate America's own holiday. Each year, the parade grew. But when Macy's brought in the lions and tigers, in addition to the bears, elephants, and camels, the animals roared and growled and they frightened the children. Macy's asked Tony to replace the animals. Can you think of something spectacular? Okay. Tony hoped to replace the animals with some kind of puppets, but his marionettes were, were less than three feet tall. He would have to make much larger puppets in order for them to be seen in the parade. And how could he make them strong enough to hold up in bad weather and light enough to move up and down the street? 
Tony knew of a company in Ohio that made blimps out of rubber, the perfect material for any weather. When he called the company and showed them his, his sketches, they agreed to make what Tony wanted. Still, how would Tony make his big puppets move? Then Tony had an idea. From an Indonesian rod puppet in his toy collection, On Thanksgiving Day, Tony, Tony's creatures, some as high as 16 feet, spilled into the streets and the crowds cheered wildly. Part puppet, part balloon, the air-filled rubber bags wo wobbled down the avenues propped up by wooden sticks. But now the sidewalks were so packed with people that only those in the first rows really could see the parade. Tony realized his puppets would have to be even bigger and higher off the ground. And though the sticks helped to steer the puppets, they were stiff and heavy. Tony wanted his balloons to articulate, which means to move and gesture, more like puppets. But how? With a marionette, the controls are above the puppets, and the, the, are above, and the puppet hangs down. But what if the controls were below, and the puppets could rise up? During the next year, Tony set his new idea into motion. This time, he asked the company in Ohio to make balloons out of rubberized silk as strong as rubber, but lighter than rubber alone. Most important, Tony ordered the balloons to be filled not just with air, but with helium too. Since helium is lighter than air, it would make the balloons rise. Once the puppets were completed, they were deflated and shipped back to Tony in New York. Tony did not know if everything would go as planned. It was all dark on Thanksgiving morning when Tony filled the balloons with helium, tethering them down with sandbags. By 1 p.m., the sidewalks were packed with people ready for the parade. And then one by one, Tony cut the lines to the sandbags. And the magnificent upside down marionettes rose up into the skies. Nodding and waving at, to the crowds below, they sailed past Central Park. They sailed down Broadway. They shimmied and swayed through the canyons of New York City. High above the crowds that, that flounced in the afternoon wind pulling the ropes, pulling the rope handlers this way and that. Yet with every heave ho, the balloons gestured and articulated like wild puppets and the crowd screamed for more. After the balloons were eased under the L, they ended in front of Macy's at Tony's Wondertown windows. And from that day on, every Thanksgiving morning, crowds have lined the sidewalk of New York City to see what new balloons would rise to the skies for the Macy's famous parade. Tony Sarge, the puppeteer who loved to figure out how to make things move, had set the stage with a little rigging for a puppet to be everything anyone could imagine it to be. And there is a picture of Tony with one of his balloons and a little bit about him. Okay, so as you saw in the story, Balloons Over Broadway, what Tony Sarge did is he had to come up with a, a solution how he was going to make these puppets so that they could move through this parade. And then as the parade became bigger and more popular, he needed them to be the balloons to be bigger. They had to be up higher than the people so that everyone could see. So he started off by putting them onto sticks, right, and holding them up. 
And then he realized that if he, that like a marionette, you could use the controls from the top, um, then he could try it that way. And then he, he ultimately ended up using helium in, in the balloon so that the balloons would float and the, the people on the ground would hold them um, and move them along. So in your bag, hopefully you stopped by the library, and if you did, you picked up one of these STEM bags. And inside the bag, if you've opened it up, you found that you have a stick, because you're gonna need a stick. You have several pieces of paper. I put a bunch of different colors in there um, to give you a place to start with your balloon. Uh, you have a string and you have a balloon, right? Your balloon may be a variety of different colors. I don't know what shape or what, what color balloon you got have. But what your job is going to be is you're going to take your balloon, you're gonna blow your balloon up and then tie it. And we're not, obviously we don't have helium because I couldn't put that in your bag. So you're, we're just gonna have regular air, blow your balloon up. You're gonna to have to think about your balloon and think about what kind of float you wanna make. A place to get inspiration for your floats is you could watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is, on, which is televised every Thanksgiving morning. Um, and it runs for a couple hours in the morning and um, you could also do a Google search and you could look at past parades, go onto YouTube, you could find some video from past parades and see what kind of floats they are. Typically the floats are uh, made to resemble uh, cartoon characters or storybook characters, figures that um, people would be familiar with. So um, let's say for example, you in your bag, you got a yellow balloon. You may want to make a Pikachu because that's a, that's a character that most people would know would be pretty simple to make. Um, in my bag, I got a pink balloon. Maybe I want to make this into Peppa Pig or some type of pig, that, that pe the storybook pig that people would know. Um, maybe you get an orange balloon and you could make it into Garfield. Um, you, you just have to kind of be creative and kind of come up with your idea and then use the paper that you have in your bag or if you have other craft supplies at home, you're going to give your balloon, you can put ears on it or put a nose, you can draw eyes, you could glue eyes onto the balloon, um, but kind of make it so it looks like that character or what you're trying to create. And then you're gonna decide how you're going to make your balloon move. So you did get a stick, so you can do what Tony did at the beginning and attach your balloon to the stick and you could move it this way, right? Just kind of hold it and move it along or you also have the string, you could create it more of a marionette style by putting the string over the, the stick, hooking it to your balloon, and then you can make the balloon move from the top. You can make it move around. Um, if you have any, if you are, have siblings or other people, or maybe you get together with family members for Thanksgiving, this could be a fun thing to do with other people. Um, you could just get some more balloons, or if you have siblings and you each got one of these bags, then you can put on your own parade and have your own Thanksgiving parade. But be sure to watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade because it will be fun to see that now that you've heard the story. So I hope you have a really, really awesome Thanksgiving. And um, I look forward to seeing you around the library. Stop in and let me know what you made or send a picture to our Facebook page and uh, check back in for more activities. Take care. Have a great day.